Hi, in this video we show how we can compute the derivative of a product of two functions when we are only given graphical representation of the functions. The problem is that we have the graphs of f and g and h is the function defined as the product of f and g. If we would have explicit algebraic expressions for f and g, we would compute what the function h is and then take the product rule. This is something that could be done here since f and g are piecewise linear and it would, in theory, be possible to obtain an explicit expression for h as a piecewise quadratic function. But in fact, the problem is somehow simpler and we merely need information about f and g at the points where the derivatives are taken. We can first take a good look at functions f and g. Notice that for almost any x values, the functions f and g are linear. There only seems to be a problem when x equals 3, since f is non-differentiable there, due to the corner or cusp it has on the graph. This is something we need to think about when finding the derivative of the product of f and g at x equals 3 in the third part of the problem. Let's start with finding the derivative of h at x equals 1. The product rule says that h prime of 1 is equal to f prime of 1 times g of 1 plus f of 1 times g prime of 1. We will need information about the functions and their derivatives at x equals 1. Since f and g are linear, near x equals 1, we can find explicit rules for both by taking two points for each line. Function f is a piecewise linear function defined by two rules. When x equals 1, we need to use the rule that applies when the values of x are left of the cusp. That's when x is less than 3. So we take two points on that line that are left of 3. 0, 2 and 3, 4 will do. Function g is linear and we can take two points, 0, 2 and 3, 0. With those points we shall be able to compute the slopes and find equations of each line using the point slope form. The slope of f is obtained by computing the rise over the run using the two points 0, 2 and 3, 4. This gives a slope of 2 thirds. Using 0, 2 as a point on the line, the point slope form gives y equals 2 plus 2 thirds times x minus 0, which is 2 plus 2 thirds of x. For g, we use the points 0, 2, and 3, 0, and the rise over the run gives a slope of minus 2 thirds. Then, in point slope form, the equation of the line, where we use the point 0, 2 again, is given by y equals 2 minus 2 thirds of x. We have added the two expressions on the figure for you to see. With those expression, we, expressions, we can evaluate f, g, and their derivatives, f prime and g prime, at x equals 1. We have that g of 1 is 2 minus 2 thirds times 1, which is equal to 4 thirds, and f of 1 is 2 plus 2 thirds times 1, which is equal to 8 thirds. The slope of g is minus 2 thirds at any point, since it is a line, and the slope of f is 2 thirds, for the same reason, when x is less than 3. This means that g prime of 1 is minus 2 thirds and f prime of 1 is 2 thirds. Replacing those values in the product rule formula, h prime of 1 equals f prime of 1 times g of 1 plus f of 1 times g prime of 1 gives that h prime of 1 is equal to 2 thirds times 4 thirds plus 8 thirds times minus 2 thirds, which gives a value for h prime of 1 of minus 8 over 9. If we now want to compute the derivative of h at x equals 4, the same method applies. But now we need the rule for f when x is larger than 3. Taking the points 3, 4 and 5, 0, we obtain a slope of minus 4 over 2, which equals 2. And using the point 3, 4, we get that y equals 4 minus 2 times x minus 3 in point slope form. In y-intercept form, expanding the expression would give y equals minus 2x plus 10. We have added the second rule for f on the figure. 
Computing g of 4 and f of 4 gives values of minus 2 thirds and 2 respectively. The derivatives are at 4 of minus 2 thirds and minus 2. Plugging those values in the formula for h prime of 4 gives a value for the derivative of 0. This might indicate that h achieves a local max, a local min, or an inflection point at x equals 4. At x equals 3, it is more difficult to compute the derivative of h if it exists. In most situations, because f is non-differentiable at x equals 3, it is very likely that the product of f and g won't be as well. On web work, this is usually what happens, and typically the answer would be that the limit does not exist, or d &E. But to make sure it doesn't exist, a careful analysis must be done, mainly by looking at the limiting behavior of the slopes of the tangent lines at x approaches 3 of the continuous function h. On the following slides, we have done this. It turns out that we are very lucky here, and h is differentiable at x equals 3. For those of you who are more advanced, I have written the solution and you can take a look at it. Again, the ingredients needed for h to be differentiable are continuity of h at x equals 3, which follows here since h is a product of continuous functions, and continuity of the derivative h prime at x equals 3. It is this last property that is being investigated in our solution. Thanks for watching.